Hey everyone, Wynn here and welcome back to my channel once again. It is that time of year where we break out the, the sweaters and also all of the poinsettias are starting to pop up everywhere. Whoa! So as you can see, this is a beautiful red poinsettia and we're gonna turn it right into a, so just as fast as that, you'll be done with your first poinsettia. So follow along with me and hit that like and subscribe button. All right, let's go. Okay, so for our supplies today, I'm using this simple brush set. And again, this tutorial is for a beginner artist. So this is under $15 and this is a great set to use. It's synthetic white Taclon. And I like to have a tissue paper and a paper towel on hand. And to test out colors, this is why I use this little scratch piece of paper. It can be watercolor paper or any type of paper. And I'm using Saunders Waterford and this is 12 by 16. I'm testing out this Saunders Waterford. I usually use arches and that's kind of the my go-to. Yeah, I'm just going to try out some of this. So make sure your surface is nice and clean. And I'm gonna start off with a larger brush. So I'm gonna use the three quarter flat brush. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is spray down your colors. So this is Rose Quinodendron and Opera Rose and Cad Free Red. And I'm just using this little spray bottle to spray that down. And I'm gonna add quite a bit of pigment of Opera Rose and grab some Rose Quinodendron and a bit of this Cad Free Red. All right, so I'm gonna mix all of those together. And you want a consistency basically of olive oil. To make this as easy as possible, what I'm going to do is get my shape going first. So I want to start off with this, uh, this round shape with a point. And it comes around and so we have that nice point to it and I'm gonna add a ton of water in here and a, and a lot of pigment so let's kind of bring it all together so the everything stays kind of within this leaf shape get some more you really get to choose how much red you want and how what which way you want it do you want it more on the pink side or you want it more on the deep red, which is cad red. Okay, so that's a good start. And let's just go once more with this whole idea and create another leaf right next to it, not really caring if it's gonna go into the next area because, you know, we wanna create this feeling of the this shape of the watercolor going into all these colors. And now we have some nice, vibrant colors happening. And once again, I don't care that it's, it's going in. I'm just going to create some more leaves right behind it. Okay, so these are the shapes that you want to be trying to create. So it's quite a bit of water on my brush. And let's create some variety. So we have this shape here, and it's kind of coming back. So we have kind of a unique shape there. You don't want everything the same when you're creating leaves or, you want to have some variety in there. Okay, and you can even add some more of that cad red while it's still wet. And let's go back in with, you know, I'm gonna keep a little area white in the center for some of my little bulbs in the center. So let's. Let's keep going with these leaves. Again, I don't care that it I'm going into my next one because we'll we'll be put, we'll be putting some more uh, leaves over the top of that. Again, you want to think variety. And let's go around and create a point to that. I'm just using this three quarter uh, flat brush, and it's a part of a simple pack under $15, and I'll link that in the description below. Okay, everything's pretty wet on wet. 
And let's just do one more to create some more variety. This will be a shorter one. So let's still have that point and kind of come back in. And you just want to go over it a couple times. Don't want to do it too many times, but you do want to have that unique point. Okay, so there's a point coming out there. See if I can finish out that point. There we go. All right, so we still have a little bit of a white area in there. And I'm liking this so far. I think since they're so full, we can add one more just kind of hanging out down here and just go right into your other colors. It doesn't matter. And that creates a really nice shape. All right, so you can see all the different points here. And let's dry this out. So now we have this beautiful, rich uh, three colors mixed together. Okay, now that it's all dry, I want you to get a little bit of Payne's Gray. And we're going to mix that in with a little bit of the red. And now we're going to start defining the leaf shapes. So let's, uh, let's just kind of define in here and just very carefully go back into the tip. So now we have that, that shape there. And I'm just going to let it dry right there because that's kind of the, the fold. So wherever you see that little dark area, I want you to kind of draw one of these lines. Okay. And bring this right in here too. Let's start at the base and kind of, if you, you want it a little bit lighter, you can always use the tissue papers to lighten it up a little bit or just add more water to your brush. Yeah, just trying to make that thin line kind of appear. There's a little one back here that's popping through. Okay, so it's starting to give that realistic effect. Okay, this is an interesting shape back here, so this is just kind of folding back. And our last one just kind of going behind the shape, so I think it's like right in here. And this little one right here. Okay, so you're starting to see kind of the outline shapes of these things. So what you can do from here is get some more water on your brush and you can start to design these outline shapes. So you can just kind of go over it. I would go even thinner. You just want to have kind of these shapes popping through. All right, so we have all of our lines put in there and it's really starting to take shape now. So what we can do is start to get these petals that have rose quinidendron and a little bit of cad red and really get it like olive oil on your brush. And let's create a few of these inside petals so they're gonna be even darker. Okay, so it's really gonna be saturated. And let's just create a few of these. I'm noticing one is kind of coming out from behind because you don't want anything identical in size. Still have a little point to them coming through. Let's do a tiny one here. Let's try to go as deep as possible. This time I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray. 
to my brush. So I'm going to really make this one even deeper. And coming out to a point. And I'll do a, one more tiny one over here. Yeah, that gives more variety. Then you can switch it back up again and get some more paint. And I have the little stems happening from there. All right, so it's really tar starting to take shape here. All right, so let's dry that out. Okay, so I'm gonna clean off my brush now and I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow. And since that's the lightest color that I see down in the inside, I'm gonna create these little buds down here, uh, just little round circles. And then in a minute, I'm going to add some sap green to them. So you don't want them all the same size. So I'm going to add that in there. And now I'm going to get some sap green and just kind of lightly put it around there as well. And that really gives that effect. You can see the bulbs in there. Okay. And you can also add a tiny little stems coming out as they're coming outward. And it is pretty dark green in there, so you could fill in some of these areas with a little bit more green. Okay, as it's starting to take shape. Okay, while well, that's drying, let's create some more of this green effect in the background with, let's just do a light wash and see if we can create some of these leaves these green leaves going back there. So I still have some pink on my brush, which is okay, because we're gonna add, this is just basically purely water. And I'm going to give the illusion that they're just fading off. So I'm gonna create some of these points. Sometimes it's nice to leave a tiny bit of color on your brush, just so you know where you've been painting. Okay, I'm gonna create another point back here. And we're gonna do a little wet onto wet technique. I'm just gonna jump around, being careful that I'm not like fully going inside the, or touching the leaf, but the, the point set of leaf. I'm gonna create a couple more points. So while these three are pretty wet, I'm going to add a lot of Permanent sap green. I'm gonna add a little bit of Windsor green in there. And let's try this one out. See what this effect takes shape here. So I'm just gonna tap the surface. And kind of let this do its thing. Okay. So this time, I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray to it and see if we can create a little bit of a darker leaf in the background. Go along there. Okay, starting to see the idea there that wherever you put water, it's going to run to. So you can kind of push your, your paper to the side can add a little bit more here and kind of create some interesting shapes. But this is the effect that we're going for. So I'm going to add a little bit more sap green down here, create our next area. And I don't mind that it's the watercolor is now doing whatever it wants. I'm just going to create these interesting patterns kind of coming along there. Could even add a little bit more water if you'd like. Let's make that leaf kind of larger than the other ones. 
Okay, so we're just trying to create variety. So let's, uh, let's get some ultramarine blue and mix it in this time. And that will create a different looking leaf. Oops, I forgot to put water down first. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, put water down first, being careful to go around the leaf or the petals of the, come back to a point and we'll just see what the water does. Okay, so I have my wet into wet. Grab a little bit of sap green and ultramarine blue. See what we got here. Kind of lightly tap into the surface. Okay, I think a little bit more green would help. Okay, so that's looking interesting. Let's uh, add a little bit more water and kind of let it settle down after a while. Okay, so let's do it a few more times over here. Just adding lots of water into our wet into wet. Come out to a point here, create this round point and create our interesting Poinsettia. Just kind of tapping the surface to make sure it's getting the water every which way. Okay, so yeah, I'm liking this. This is uh, looking wild and interesting. And let's just do another one popping out of here with a little bit of sap green. Add lots of water. We'll just do a small one coming out here. Okay. And if you ever want to, you know, make it look more interesting, just go back in and add a little bit more to create kind of a shadow, cast shadow. You can do that as well. Okay. That uh, Windsor Green is always fun too, so maybe I'll add a little bit Windsor Green to that. All right, so we are moving right along. So I want to add just a couple more little shadows. So maybe I will, while this is wet, I will add just bring out some of this little green that's on the brush and that really helps define some of these edges so if you're if it looks just like a blob of color then let's bring some of this wet color back in here and this is kind of defining area and this is a defining area right here so i'm just going to bring some of this wet color this green and bring it down little trick to uh, not have to add water to your brush. Okay, so there's there's some shadows happening right here and then that could be the, the fold of the leaf coming back in through there. Because we don't want it to look like a shape, we want it to look more 3D. Okay, give it some more depth. We'll go along the edge here to find a little bit of that. Okay, overall, I think this is looking nice, nice and free. Let's just add a little edge to that petal. And from here, it's really up to you. You could add maybe one more down here, just a tiny little, just to, I see a big white blank area. And that's just a little leaf peeking through. Okay, and that, that looks a little more balanced. Okay, let's dry this out and see what we have. Okay, this is looking really good so far. And 
I would say from here, all you'd have to do is maybe just add a little bit of shadow work. So I'm going to add quite a bit of upper rows with some of my Payne's gray. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that and see if I can define a little bit more of these leaves. So if we create some shadows, that'll just give it a little bit more depth. Okay, so there's a little bit of a shadow in there and a little bit of a darker line. So let's let's add just a little bit more shadow work in here. Okay, so I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm going to push some of those shadows back up in here and that'll create some nice See how there's now creating some shadows underneath. So let's do a little bit more here. So we have this, this leaf underneath it. And so I'm just going to darken that in just a little bit. And now you can see how this just moved forward and this stayed backwards. Okay, so that's just a little bit of Payne's Gray on my brush. Okay, we'll just do this maybe once more over here just to make sure that we're keeping true to having things pop out at you. And right over here, there's a little bit of a shadow happening as well. Okay, you can start to see all the different parts and maybe a little bit in here as it transitions over. Remember always to use your brush as a mop or a sponge to dry up any areas. All right, sometimes the tips have some shadows to it too. So let's do that. This is called glazing. And lastly, we'll dry that out, see how that looks. Okay, that's looking nice. Let's just add a few more lines to redefine some areas of interest that I lost. And that'll be about it. Thanks so much for watching my video today. And if you receive value from my video today, please hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified of all of my latest videos each week. Are you new to watercolor or you're just struggling to get better at watercolor? Well, I have an online course and I'd love to tell you about it. So if you book a call in the description below, there is a link and we can talk strategy and how I can help you get better at watercolor. All right, look forward to chatting with you and I'll see you in my next video.